boss gets one hit, okay? Hello, my fellow tarnished, and welcome as today we Ungumbunga Maximum in the name of all those who favor strength. We will bring down the hammers on all our foes and smite them in but one swing. It is satisfying, it is powerful, and above all, it is incredibly fun to hit for 8,000 damage plus with a single weapon attack. So, how is this achieved? Well, it's a combination of two incantations, four talismans, four weapons, and a whole lot of preparation that makes you in to a god. I've assembled all five special cards. Ah, impossible! So, first and foremost, then, we want to talk about the star of the show, the Giant's Crusher, the highest damage strength scaling weapon in the game. Scales S with strength when set to heavy, and of course, we want two of these at plus 25. For a second one, either New Game Plus, I'll get a friend to drop it. It also works fine with the Crozier Hammer as your second, but just slightly less damage. On each of these, we want the Ash of War, Royal Knight's Resolve, Jubilee of the Blacksmith, and if you don't know where to get this, it's in Volcano Manor, and it's not the longest run in the world from the Sight of Grace by the Godskin, but shouldn't give you too much trouble. What this will do is give your next swing a plus 80%-ish damage increase. And of course, because we're applying this to both weapons and doing a plunging attack with Power Stancing that uses both weapons, well, well, that's quite the compound effect. After that, you want literally any weapon, and ideally the lightest weapon you can get hold of, that will accept seppuku. Don't need to do anything special with it, don't need to upgrade it, you just need to have it there, and we'll get to why later. Finally, any seal will do. I chosen the claw one because it scales with strength and faith and this is a strength build so that's nice but we just need to be able to cast a couple incantations so that's what your hands be grasping then we need what your body be wearing and seemingly this be the part of the video where we be talking like a pirate in any case we want the door. I'm sorry. We want Raptor's Black Feathers. This is all about plunging attacks, and this chest piece comes with an extra 10% just about damage on plunging attacks. That's a healthy increase from a piece of armor. The other pieces just want to be as light as possible. I'm using the plus two strength helmet here because I feel like it fits the Onga Bunga look, but also, you know, it helps me reach the goal of 80 strength easier. We'll go over stats more specifically, though, in a little bit. This is gotten from this dungeon here. Here. It's simply in a chest about halfway through as you progress through the illusionary walls. It's fairly hard to miss and fairly easy to get your hands on. And it also looks pretty damn swish too. So, following that then, let's talk talismans. We want the Great Jar's Arsenal. This is a 19% increase to your carry load, and we are going to be carrying loads, so we want a load more carry load, and this is just the ticket. And it's quite easy to get. You simply need to go to the massive Great God Jar in Kaelid, and you have to get here via the Siofa River Well exit in Kaelid, and then heading north and having a chat with him. He won't say much to you, but he will then let you challenge his three champions. Once you, you know, annihilate them, you can then talk to him once more. Still won't say anything, but he will reward you with his badge of honor. Next up, then, we have the Claw Talisman. This is worth an extra 15% damage on plunging attacks, and it comes from fairly early on in Stormvale Castle. From this side of grace, head out, jump down to the roof uh, with uh, the broken pillar, do a little bit of uh, parkour around the buildings, and climb the ladder, and you will find it on a corpse. Nice and simple, and quite the potent increase. Finally, then, we want the Lord of Blood's Exaltation. And yes, this is why we have a random seppuku weapon, because we don't actually be needing to use bleed or blood loss or anything, because the self-use of seppuku triggers this talisman, and then for a good 30 seconds, you have plus 20% damage 
on everything, which is amazing. So this is from the sewers underneath Lane Dell, a little dungeon that's located there adjacent to the, you know, main whole exploring area. Run on through, get the lever, and then you face the mini boss there within, and he will drop the talisman that we desire. A fairly easy grab too. The final slot, I'm using the source seal for the stats, and I recommend you do too, unless you are incredibly high level and don't need the stat efficiency, in which case I would put on the ritual sword talisman for an extra 10% damage when you are at full health. You can also put that talisman on if what you're attacking doesn't need you to be able to fast roll and you can get away with heavy load. Now for the incantations! Oh yes, we want Golden Vow! This is quite simple, it's just from a corpse in a shack up on Mount Gelmir. You go from the Site of Grace, just a little bit down the road, and easy enough to pick up. This will give you plus 15% damage, and, well, minus 10% damage taken, but we care about the extra percent damage. Now, not many attack damage buffs stack. I have basically got everything here that does actually add together. There's a few tiny little tidbits, but it's not worth the effort and complication getting them would have. These are all the big ones. But what does work with Golden Vow is O oh Flame, grant me strength. This is a plus 20% damage buff and is located in Kaelid, down next to Fort Gale. As you head up to it, veer round to the left, and between two flaming skull tank chariot things, it will be there for you to grab. Then, good luck getting out of this awful, awful situation. The screams. They haunt me. So, we have our full setup. All on, all good. Let's talk stats. You want 80 strength. You want 25 faith to power the incantations. After that, you need at least enough equip load to uh, have a medium load with everything we're holding, which is a heavy lot of equipment. Then, with everything you have left, pump that vigor. So, how does this actually work then? Well, it's easy, but complicated. You'll see. First and foremost, cast Golden Vow, and then cast Lame Grant Me Strength. Then you want to uh, get your FP back. Then you want to Seppuku to uh, trigger the Blood Lord's uh, Exaltation. Then you want to heal that up. Then you want to put on your hammers and using your left one first in two hand, put on the Royal Knight's Resolve, then put on the Royal Knight's Resolve on the right one. And now we are ready. Basically, this build feels like <laughs> But it is so very worth it, because now you annihilate all that you touch. Not only do you get an absolutely metric ton of an opening hit, nearing 8,000 damage, Every follow-up also hits like a freight train because you're still buffed up. All you've lost is the Royal Knights, which you can reapply, but now you can just spam jump attack for 2-3k a pop, stagger enemies easily because, you know, using two colossal weapons, and you uh, can just have a grand old time. Obviously, in PvP, this is a bit of a hit and a miss. Literally, if you connect with the enemy, they're just dead. They are smushed, they are paced on the ground. But it is fairly hard to do so, because you're doing big, slow plunging attacks, and it creates this really fun game of cat and mouse, who will make the mistake, and who will pay for it. It's just hilarious when you do pull it off, and if you're smart about it, you can bait people into animations, and then catch them with the hammer hits, and sadly, I'm not a big strength person, so I've not got much experience in a strength build, so, you know, I'm, I'm piloting this with, let's say, less than stellar skills, and still getting a really good result, at least when it it comes to bosses. In any case then, that's essentially the setup. A huge combination of weapons, talismans, armor, and incantations that all together give you two separate hits at once from the plunge that are both increased by 
160%. Two hits of 2.6 times your normal damage. And, I mean, you're seeing the results. It is utterly fantastic, and I hope you consider it. I have really gone all out here on every way to make this stronger, using the buffs that don't overlap or cancel each other to really bring this home. Stuff like Howl of Shabriri doesn't stack with the Flame or Golden Vow, so that's kind of sad. You can go on low health and use the more damage on low health talisman. There's a few little ways to tweak it, but these are the pillars for that, well, big, big hit. I hope you've enjoyed this build, like if you indeed have, and subscribe and hit the bell for more Elden Ring builds, tips and tricks, funny bits, and all that good stuff that you know and love. Please consider supporting this channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a good boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate rate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye <laughs>